Hey yo, welcome to the Industry Deals Game Design Podcast. Today with Sven. Hello, as always. And we have a wonderful guest today as well. Yes, acting lead quest designer extraordinaire and accessibility champion Thierry Lorette. Welcome. Woo! Hey. Hello, people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. Well, we're glad you're here. Yes, it works. It, it is actually my first podcast. <gasps> oh, wow. That's awesome. Ooh, kind of the premiere. <laughs> and you're you're from all the way from Quebec, right? Yeah, I'm, I live in uh, in uh, Quebec. It's been uh, uh, almost more than uh, 10 years now. Uh, I immigrated from uh, um, Rainan Island because I wanted to be a game dev, basically. So mm -hmm. at uh, a at point in, uh, in my life, I say, okay, uh, what can I do to uh, make this dream come true? And the obvious re uh, answer was to... Uh, To move from a, a beautiful place with a uh, beach and sun to go into Canada, where is a uh, minus 40, uh, almost uh, <laughs> 10 months in the year. Where you drown in snow, yeah. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> uh, did you, did you just, was this like a gamble or did you just, so did you just go to Canada and then start yes. looking and trying there or did you already prepare for it in some way? Kind, kind of, basically, it, it was kind of a, a gamble and uh, uh, and preparation uh, also because hey, immigration you don't you don't take the plane and say good morning I want to immigrate to Canada you have to to check <laughs> some stuff uh, before but basically I the, the gamble was was every uh, immigration step basically because. You have to get a, a, a permit to uh, a visa to uh, to be able to work to stu study, etc. So um, me, I didn't have the the um, the formation, the scholarship for uh, to become um, a game a game dev. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first thing I had to do was to uh, look for a school. I start to uh, call them from uh, from my place and I ask, okay, is there a way to get a um uh school visa i think it i guess it's it's uh, it's like that to have a, a school visa but it seems that i was the first immigrant wanting to go there so they didn't have uh, uh the knowledge how to to do that i start to to look for and at some point i, I say okay you, you know what i'm coming <laughs> that's awesome it seems to be way easier to do it from uh from canada Yep. So um, I, I I have a friend uh, who is uh, she she is a recruiter uh, for four people in Rainan Island to come in Canada. So she helped me with uh, with that. But uh, yes, basically this is a part of the of the gamble, and it's the part where I say, okay, I'm leaving my place, job, and family, and uh, and and the beach and the sun. And the and the food, oh, no. <laughs> and I'm moving to to, to, the to uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so and I'm moving from from France to to come uh, to uh, to Quebec, and I I know I knew that I uh, I had a three month um, holiday visa, which is uh, which is um, my gamble to make sure that everything uh, I had to do to stay here yeah. uh, was done in three months. And uh, seems that uh, I succeeded. Yes. So, uh, but yeah, it, and from that it was I, I was really lucky because um, every step uh, went through at the right time. I got my my uh, visa for for uh, the scholarship uh, right in time. Uh, once uh, I I finished that, I was at at the same time trying to become a permanent permanent resident. Yeah. I got it right after uh, the uh, uh, the scholarship visa. So and right after that, I had to find a job and I start to um, to go in internship at Binox, uh, the one who uh, at the time was working on the Amazing Spider-Man. Ah, oh, with the for the mm -hmm. Wii, right? For Nintendo Wii, was that? The... Oh, for every uh, every platform, mm -hmm. it, it was the the game uh, for. For the movie uh, with uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Andrew Garfield, I think. Yes. Yeah. So it it was it was this game. I was in uh, an intern uh, for uh, four months there, and then after that, uh, some of my um, teacher in the uh, in the program was people from Ubisoft, and they say, "Hey, do you want to uh, to come to work with us 
yes. That was <laughs> directly getting the invitation. <laughs> That's that's a goal. So so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm coming and I start to work on uh, Assassin's Creed the uh, free, which is amazing. That was uh, my uh, yes. I mean, I I, uh, I could have uh, begun worse <laughs> because we we met each other when we talked on Twitter, right? And you mentioned yeah. that you were uh, coming uh, become or joining the game industry world, the game dev world, uh, rather late for like yeah. with thirty seven was it or the Oh no! It's it. Oh, it it. I start the school at uh, thirty one, and 31, I start okay. the, I, I start the uh, to work in the industry at uh, thirty two. Ah, okay, awesome. It's not late. It's, exper <laughs> it's experiment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to work. I think it's never a too late. Okay. Oh, totally. So even if someone would join with fifty, I mean, this if this is your passion, if this is what you love doing, you gotta make it come true, or you'll regret it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, totally. And th there's something that y you just say, and uh, it's uh, the passion. And I'm going to to put a, a message that I'm still doing every year when I go to see the student. Your passion to go to work in game industry doesn't have to be. No, I mean, it mustn't be games. It it's about create game, which is totally different. Yeah, and you can love game and be passionate about that, but it it's it not that it's not the, the passion, the right passion. The right passion, it's about to create. It's about creation. And this is for the students that might hear that. This is where you, this is what you must have, the passion for creation. Yeah, and going through all these hardships, everything that comes with, you know, becoming a prof... Like, this is a, a craft that is not only one thing you have to learn. It's not, you take this one software and then you learn this one software and then you can be a game designer, right? Yeah. You have a thousand softwares, a thousand methodologies to understand all the theoretical stuff and you need to, the drive to be creative in a collaborative team environment, right? Yep, and, and sometimes you have to create new uh, new ways as well. On on my side, uh, I think that um, you become yourself by copying other people, basically, and you you check what is done from uh, uh, from other. I mean, every idea is is, is good, and um, and I'm not talking about plagiarism uh, or um, okay. Let's say mm -hmm. I mean it, it's being inspired by. Yeah. And it's fine, basically. When we start to, uh, on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, to uh, check how we are going to create a quest and not mission, because in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we change the way to uh, to create content. Uh, I mean, you you, you uh, must have seen that with the story creator mode, for example, which is a, a light version of, uh, of what we are using in Anvil. I checked how other game engine are working and say, okay, mm -hmm. this, I can use it. This, I can use it. This is really cool, but it's not for me. Yeah. I mean, it's not for us. It's not for, for, for the game. Maybe later, maybe we're going to use that. And, and to be honest, there are some stuff I say, oh, okay, it's really good. We're going to use that. And it wasn't. And when we, we started to do, we, we ship the game with, with that and say, okay, it it was it was good enough, but it wasn't what we should have used. And making mistake is okay. I mean, you you learn more by making mistakes that um, making uh, make making not great stuff. But if you never fail, you never learn. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's probably the uh, too long didn't read game dev. You have yeah. to fail a million times <laughs> until you find it. No, but I mean, you're going to see that in every uh, game dev discussion. Learn to fail faster. That uh, that is how you become uh, a senior, basically an expert. It's yeah. you learn to fail faster. Iterative process, lots of yeah. prototyping, and in getting inspired by other games is. I think that's they are laying the groundwork, you know, for mm -hmm. uh, for other games to waste less time on trying out new systems and you know then having space to cr try out systems that don't exist. So when you see, for example, in this game, the as you said, this, the, the story creator mode is already mm -hmm. working well. You can take the baseline from that system to already have a working prototype. And then you can put your own ideas and innovations into the system. Yeah, and and the thing that I like about the industry is 
not every time and, and not every company, but for example, for the dialogue editor, which is part of the uh, uh, story creator mode as well, there's a, a presentation, a GDC presentation uh, from Paul of um, CDR talking about that for one hour and they explain everything. I mean, the information is there. I spent a, a long time to check what they, what they did and hey, it's working. I'm not going to to reinvent the, the well. We are going to take that, okay, put it in a, in our engine and make sure that is it's going to work as we need to. But I mean, I cannot say, hey, this is crap, and we, I'm <laughs> going I'm going to create my own <laughs> system. There's someone who's, who who spent. I mean, the guy from CD Project spent probably more than ten years to work on that. I'm not going to to not. Take what they they share what they're sharing basically it's just a n- nonsense exactly yeah, yeah. It's, it's super cool to see in the games industry especially i think that all the different studios and companies are willing to share that information yep. and if you look at other industries like they are so secretive about it to not lose their market advantage and here we have no. events like gdc and then we can all profit from each other and learn from each other and it's so cool to see Oh, totally, and that, that is something that I love about uh, about the industry, the industry, and about uh, the community as well. I mean, um, for for example, the uh, the mod in uh, in uh, in Skyrim or XCOM two, for example, they are open source. I mean, I I, I during my time in in France for for my. Uh, um, for my um, studies, I was a, a programmer. I spent uh, three years to learn uh, programming. Oh, cool! And I'm I'm a, a, a Linux guy, open source and, and and stuff. It's just really difficult to be able to use. And I'm old and and I'm and I'm tired and I want to get thing uh, work uh, really quick now. But yeah. I used <laughs> to. Uh, I mean, I used to uh, install uh, Linux and use li- Linux in in my uh, whole life when I was young. And because it's open source, and you can you can check what you can take whatever you want from uh, uh, from people and change uh, f- to to uh, to uh, uh, meet your yep. uh, your need. Yep. So, uh, and I really like that about modding, for example. Oh yeah, I have a Raspberry Pi behind me, behind the door, yep. and uh, I I love that. Like you can. Windows is very easy to use, right? And yep. these kind of things, you can just plug and play everything you want. But sometimes you have these specific things you need, features, yeah, yeah. feature requests, maybe for your personal life. And that extends to all of your professional life as well. Yeah. If, you, if you have custom systems that you need to do, then you you break out the your own code. And yep. if you have something that is already like a system in your development process, then you can, you know, fill that with content. Ah, totally. Very cool. Um, maybe I talk a little bit about uh, quest design, yep. uh, since you're now acting lead quest designer, right, on, on the new title that we, of course, cannot talk, talk about. <laughs> but maybe I can still ask you the question or some questions. Um, what's, how do I understand quest design? What's the difference to mission design? What's the difference to level design? Like, where is this? What exactly okay. is quest design? Um, okay, F- first, I'm going to, to say uh, what's the difference between... Uh, um, not mission design, quest design, but uh, the narrative and the uh, uh, the, the level. Uh, level design is um, is a big big uh, sphere that englobes everything. Mm. In in uh, in Ubisoft, for example, for Assassin's Creed, we have world uh, designer that taking. Um, that taking care of the world, uh, creating building, uh, making everything in uh, in the world uh, fun to navigate, for example, and challenging when you go into a fort. Uh, a fort is designed by a, a world designer. Mm-hmm. Uh, mission and quest design. The really uh, simple difference here is. Um, D- did you ever play Assassin's Creed? I'm going to take. Yes, of course. Yes. 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 Sure. So Almost for for, all of them. <laughs> for uh, Syndicate, for example, you have mission. Whenever you you go and you need to assassinate some some someone, you're going to be into um, um, into a specific location, and everything is going to be um, designed f- by the mission designer to uh, to 
get the the the, um, the pace right and the enemies uh, are going to be add to uh, for example i i work on the uh, on assassin's creed um, syndicate i was in charge of the uh, assassination um, in the train station charing cross i think mm -hmm. and during the game charing cross is just a uh, um, a place uh, just a train station during the mission i had um uh, three or four uh ambush of people mm -hmm. uh, patrolling i had my my target doing stuff uh and this location is kind of um closed even if you can go every everywhere you you want this part of of the map is specifically designed for the mission at this point where a quest is using the world because yeah. what we what we decide is uh you can you can um uh, finish a quest before even accepting it like like in uh, uh witcher for example you can find someone you can kill uh, kill the person you can find uh the quest item before the the quest giver is asking you to to do it that means that the challenge must be there mm -hmm. before you accept you accept the the quest so uh -huh. we are using the world most most of the time that's that's mean uh and sometimes we we don't and the the setup become alive because uh, uh, for the narrative reason obviously but most of the time you you can find a quest item and uh, you can uh have killed some someone before um before you uh, uh you were asked when i played the game uh, assassin's creed odyssey for for example because i was uh working on on the quest the first thing i i did was to not do the quest it was to uh, go into the fort and and kill people le level up because i i wanted to have i mean i spent three years doing quests say so, okay i'm going to see the other part of, of the game and yeah. by killing i killed the guy and it was uh, uh um hey i don't remember the name it was not a, a templar it was an ancient i don't remember the name in in uh english for the uh for the bad guy not a problem. No, but uh, we know the bad guy, the, the yeah, evil so, villain. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I killed someone who was part of, of a camp, and I got the uh, the the shard of uh, um, of it and to to uh, create the 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 pyramid, and and it was there. And when once uh, later on, I I uh, was asked to kill to kill uh, the villain. Say, hey, I already killed him. Look, look at his head, <laughs> and. It's it's quest versus mission is the openness basically. Okay, that's cool. And everything is inside a narrative framework, I guess. Yes, uh, this is probably the um, uh, the most um, yes the, the most challenging thing is that you need to uh, be able to um, to. Um, um take the shortcut for account where mm -hmm. in in the mission it's going to be linear here in assassin's creed odyssey for example because we have branching as well and you can start f you can start the quest for from uh many points there mm -hmm. is many un entry point for, for a quest you have to take that in in the challenge in um and in the story as well so then didn't you like in, engage in a discussion about like emotional quest design the other day so this maybe harder maybe you can r recap then well th there was this one uh, situation that uh, adds up nicely to what Hiri just said about like branching narratives and having like a little bit more choice in quests than in a linear mission mm -hmm. type of situation and I was like remembering this one situation from Knights of the Old Republic back in the day uh, which is like not really a, a quest per se, but it had like a lot of player consequence in a sense. There was this one situation where there were like, um, you were on this planet, which is like a very poor planet and it's like in an urban environment and there were beggars around and um, you could choose basically if you want to give this beggar like some credits or money mm -hmm. or you could choose not to do though. And that had like different consequences. And there was like this 
moral gray area in between. If you helped him, then somebody else would come and kill him because he now has the money. And if you didn't help him, didn't give him the money, he would then still be like a poor person and then try to yep. get money from somebody else. And having these types of like more subtle consequences of what your actions are in the game, I, fi I always find that super fascinating. And I think having that is something you can have more in a quest than in a directly designed mission. At least that's what I feel. Oh, or would you guys disagree? Uh, I, I I do agree, uh, but it's this is part of more of the um, the writer uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because in terms of gameplay and this is the the the, the thing that can be uh, difficult to to um, to get for uh, from student and like I said I, I I'm talking every year with, with student um, there is the Quest designer should should take care of the gameplay, where the um, writer is taking care of the story. Obviously, both are talking together and influence together as well. Uh, but a choice in um, uh, in a dialogue is not part of the gameplay per se. It's going to 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 uh, to create gameplay. For example, if you you say. Uh, Uh, attack him or uh, spare him is going to you have you're going to have something different uh, after but the choice is is uh, is part of the writing and to to um, go with uh, what you you said there's a, a quest in uh, Dragon Age 2 which uh, 10 years later is still haunting my night It's it's a quest about uh, a guy who asks you to find uh, his sister. She she's lost. Uh, she doesn't have uh, she she not kind of mad, she have mental in illness, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she's lost in the city. So you okay, okay, I'm going to do that. You go check uh, with uh, you go check. You find uh, she's somewhere. You find her, and she said, "No, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not crazy." This guy is trying to uh, to uh, uh, take advantage of, of me or to, to kill me. I don't re re really remember. And at the end of the of the quest, you find you have both of them saying the guy say, "Hey, come, come, dear sister. I know you you're not good, but I'm going to uh, to take care of uh, of you." And and the woman say, "No, no, I'm not crazy. He wants to kill me." And here you have to to choose, and you have Aww. to choose. Okay, what are you going? What are you going to do? Are you going to let the uh, let the woman um, uh, free? Yeah. But maybe she's crazy, and maybe she she's she's not. Or are you going to uh, uh, give her to to, uh, to her brother? Which is yeah. maybe not uh, maybe not her brother at all, and maybe he is, and you have a choice here, and you 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 choose, and you don't know, you you never know if you did the right thing, and this is this is writing, purely writing. I mean, in terms of gameplay, I I did mm -hmm. some some stuff, but here I say okay, I'm going to I'm going I have a choice, I have a dilemma to to um, to solve. And you cannot mm -hmm. solve a dilemma, obviously. And so you you you're doing something, and and you don't have the answer. And this is exactly the the, the thing like in a in a Star Wars Republic. If you do that, there might be good consequences, there might be uh, bad consequences. And yeah, this is really the uh, the narrative narrative driven gameplay, basically, where you are like you said, emotional attached to what you're going to do, you, you, your choice. And that's why I really like. RPG more than a linear story, but it's very really two different different type of of, uh, of game. Mm -hmm. It's you. We are empowering the player. It's mm -hmm. your decision. You're going to do what you want, and you're going to and it's going to reflect of of your choice. And this is why I, during the um, uh, the release of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I went to uh, a lot of uh, of streamer, famous or, or or not, mostly not uh, not famous. To talk with them and say, okay, um, what do you think of the game? And something that that um, um, not bothers me, but hit me was a lot of of them say I'm aiming for the good ending, and I, I 
always said there is no good ending in Odyssey. There is no good ending. There is no bad ending. It's only mm -hmm. the ending that reflects your choice. And your and personality in a, in a sense. Yeah, exactly. And most most of people wanted to have the happy ending with every every uh, every uh, member of the family alive. But it's it's not that that sudden me. I mean, they they do what what they want, but they they were looking for the good thing to do instead of doing what they wanted to do. Oh, that's a super interesting thought. Uh, this this makes me look at the Witcher endings differently. Like you always, when you're playing Witcher, you of course you you have some specific goal in mind for the end of yep. the, your story as Geralt. But I never thought of it that way. That if you like just choose what you would choose, yep. so the ending reflects your personality. That's a very very cool angle. Wow! It's 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 because. Um... First, we spend time to to create those those endings. So go go play yeah. it, please. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the first thing. But also, it's it's like, I mean, yes, you you can choose. For for example, Gerard is is someone who is with a personality, and you can decide to stick with uh, with this with his personality, or mm -hmm. you can create your own Gerard, for example, and. You can choose, for example, in Dragon Age, I start to, uh, I was uh, um, a warrior and I say, okay, my, my character is going to be a warrior that is going to fight for, for a wizard. And mm -hmm. every time he see a wizard, whatever happened is going to take his side. Every time. Mm -hmm. And spoiler, because I mean, I can, it's, it's uh, almost 10 years. Yeah, you can spoil it. I, I don't <laughs> re really remember the name, but there is a traitor at the end and he's a wizard. And I would say, I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot side, but my character was like, I, I side with magic people always. Whatever happened, they are right. And okay, it was really hard to, to because he, he, he was really doing bad stuff, but with the, his own, um, his own uh, reason, which were good reason for, for him. But in my morality, on my own morality, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But because I decided to to go with that, say okay, no exception. I'm still going with with what I I, I start, which is we with, without good people, whatever happened. Uh, I was just uh, wanted to say, like I think a lot of people shy away from the from the bad side because from a feeling side, it often seems like games punish you for choosing to side with a bad guy instead of rewarding you for doing yep. the role-playing aspect. But uh, I think it's, it's changing more and more. And more. Uh, it used to be like that. If you do everything perfectly, you're going to have the real, real great cutscene. But mm -hmm. now you're going to have the real great cutscene of what you did, whatever you, you, you do. I was mm -hmm. specifically... <laughs> visible in for example the bioware game mm. such as mass effect where being playing the bad guy often came down to just being an ass to a lot of people and not like doing uh evil-ish decisions yep. just because they there were justifications just because okay I, I don't like you i'm going to i don't know betray you now and stuff like that so that's it's always interesting to see and and most of the time i mean like I said, in, in the past game, I think that when you, you were playing the, the, the bad guy, there are a, a lot of content that you uh, didn't have access to uh, anymore. So uh, people want to have content, which is totally normal. And uh, this is something I, I really uh, like about Odyssey. You, you, whatever you choose, you, you, there is no content you're missing because of your choice. There mm -hmm. is going to be content you're miss, but I mean, not missing of, of like for example, spoiler alert again. But hey, it's uh, <laughs> it's been it's been a while since Odyssey. When you have to choose between kill your um, your father or, or spare him, if you decide to kill him, you have a fight after with uh, your uh, your stepbrother. But you know, it's not a big. It's it's a branching basically a branching yeah. con consequences. So. It's not a content that you that you are missing, and also that's you know games are of course a playful thing, playful media, but they're also there to you know bring you into these moral dilemmas and simulate life choices, mm -hmm. so that there's actual heavy consequences on a on such a decision is like should this should be the case, right? People shouldn't yep. let off the hook easily just because they made an evil decision, as Sven said. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. When, when do you guys say would the choice or the decision you take become meaningful within a quest? Like, does it is it tied to the activity you do or is it, is it really tied to the final point of, okay, I'm going this way or going that way? Or does it have to have a, like a build up, you get attached to the characters or the world or a specific item and then you have some kind of punch at the end that pushes you over the edge. Oh, and then you think like, oh, okay, this was kind of touching that that hit me hard. I didn't expect that. So the thing that we we did on uh, on uh, Odyssey was to make sure that every decision you're you're making is uh, you're going to to know that you that you did something, uh, and the sooner the better. But so sometimes it's going to uh, the big big decision like kill or spare your your father. You have the uh, the uh, the consequences way later in in the game, but. It's it is a big decision that you're you're making at, at this point. So so it's uh it's okay for for the side content for example for example we make sure that you you know really really uh quickly that what you did uh what was the what the consequences you did because um, if not you have I think I think it's beyond two soul but I I'm don't really. I'm not really sure, but I think it's beyond to soul that critics that l people didn't see that that there was consequences because everything was really re in fact was really well written that they didn't yeah. see there there was many story and this is what we it's something that we wanted to have, to avoid uh, to make sure that hey you did that and I'm going to tell you that you you did that and I'm going to tell you that I know that you did that. Mm. So, uh, which is important for the player to be aware yeah. of that the game is recognizing his actions, yeah, to feel validated, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because if we cannot change uh, uh, everything in uh, in in the uh, in the world, for example, for example, the player needs still to be aware with the uh, with the character with the NPC. Mm -hmm. But then again, Beyond Two Souls had a very radical or let's say absolute ending, right? So yep. even even if you did a lot of decisions that mattered as way as you were going through the story, if I remember correctly, the ending spoiler alert, the ending or one of the endings of Beyond Two Souls is you joining the collective cosmos of souls. I think so. And if you and if you're in there, then of course, what did the decisions matter that you made in your life if you just join a collective of souls in the afterlife anyway? So that's I, that, that's also a problem, I think that you're often facing when making a game with an ending, right? How do you make the choices that you made on the way there even matter? Yep. Like, what, what, what would be... So I'm thinking about Witcher. They did a great thing, right? G giving you all these plethora of different endings that you could reach, mm -hmm. you know, ending with Triss, ending with Yen, all these kind of things. But then I think about games like Skyrim where I have 400 hours and I never played it through because there is no real ending. Like, you, you finish the main quest and then, okay, you slay the evil dragon and there you go, that's it. And now you the can continue continued. doing your yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> so, what would be your uh, ideal approach to to a world? It it really depends of, of of the game. Okay, for for example, my my um, the best game I have ever played uh, yet is uh, Breath of the Wild. There mm -hmm. is, and and um, I'm not afraid to say there is no story in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best collection of side quests yeah. I've ever seen. <laughs> if you played if, if you played Breath of the Wild. Do you remember three quests that that uh, do you remember three quests you have to, you had to do with meaningful meaning? No, I don't remember a single one actually. Sven, the the, the interesting thing is uh, that you actually to complete the game to like beat the the boss, you don't have to do any of the yep. of the activities in the world. You don't have to collect any of the trophies, even though like the it makes your player player, player character stronger. Like throughout the game, and it is heavily incentivized through that mm -hmm. that you do that, that you become strong yep. because it makes the final final boss encounter much easier. But I think you can go to each point in the world right from the start. There's no boundaries, and like it's more a natural boundary throughout the world that you okay, you might be too underpowered for one of the quests, but you can still achieve it if you're really, really good. 
Yeah, and uh, that for me itself was super meaningful playing the game. So. Exactly, that, that, that's that's uh, that's exactly my point. Now, when I say there is no story, there is a story in, in Breath of the Wild, which is yeah. go kill Ganon, and yeah. there is a mm-hmm. lot of lore that you can find, and uh, uh, the picture you have to you have to take. And I, I finished the, the game one hundred percent, but. Like I said, you go talk to, to, to people who are going to say, hey, fine, do this, this challenge and you're going to uh, uh, unlock a shrine or find, find something. But basically the quest in, in Breath of the Wild are, are that. And you have a, a, a story bit when you, you defeat a, a mystical beast. I think it's a beast, mystical beast in English, the big dungeon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When, when you... Um, when you you beat them, you have a bit of story of the uh, ancient heroes, and there there is a bit of narrative. But overall, it's four different stories that bring you to 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 one. And like I said, it's one of my favorite game of of all time because of of the of the system. And even if the uh, the narrative is not as deep as a, a, a Witcher, for for example, yeah. it's still working. So basically, I don't have the the answer of what is a perfect uh, perfect ending perfect story because it really depends on of the game what i can say basi- uh, however is we are, we are making a games and we are we make sure that the, there is gameplay yeah. basically uh, a lot of people tend to uh, um to want to write a story when when they want to when they want to create a game the first thing they do they hey it's going to be a game about I'm, and, and I'm going to uh, quote uh, uh, Ego Raptor, I, th- I think, uh, on his uh, uh, satire uh, video. Hey, you want to create a, a game with, uh, and I'm a pirate, with, and I'm going to kill a zombie from space. And uh, okay, this is not a game. This is a story. If yeah. you want to create a, a game, you have to create mechanics. You have to create a, a system. This is totally different. You have to create uh, uh, fun. Mm-hmm. Basi- basically okay for me the story in the game is like as we mentioned earlier it's like the narrative of a game is a framework right you have yep. something that needs to be self-contained inside of it so and you can see this in all in all the best games like zelda is that when the base systems and the mechanics and the loops second to second or the bigger ones I mean, if they are fun and addictive right and yep. satisfying then you can like the story comes after, even though I'm a narrative designer, of course, my heart bleeds if I hear that the story is not the most important thing about the game. It's just something that you have to realize when making one is that the base mechanics have to be amazing. Yep. And then the other part, right? Is that actually the starting point for for Ubisoft or what you are doing in your day to day as well? That you're looking more at activities and gameplay mechanics before putting that into a narrative context, or is that? Does it depend on quest to quest? Or? I I can on, only work uh, talk about uh, 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 Assassin's Creed basically, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. now the setup is is the, the more important thing at the beginning, and the the story, everything goes from the setup basically yeah. because the mechanics are, are going with with, uh, with with the setup. When we uh, create Assassin's Creed uh, uh, Syndicate, uh, we knew that we wanted to have train. And we knew what we, we wanted to to have a, a carriage as well. So you you are, this, the mechanic because of the of the the, the setting in uh, Victorian in, um, England, we create the mechanic that you can fight on the uh, on the carriage, yep. which is which is really cool. But it become it come from from the setting. You're you're not going to do that in in ancient Greece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the setting is really the, probably the, one of the, I think, probably one of the most important. And after that, you can you can put the story in, in any. Set. I mean, we have wonderful writer that can put any story in any setting. Mm-hmm. There's always something that you're going to 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 have. Like for example, when you you're talking about uh, in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, you, you're going to talk about the uh, industrial revolution. That, that's a given. Yeah. And when you're, you're, we're going to, to when, when you're uh, choosing uh, uh, Odyssey, you're, we're going to, to, to talk about the Peloponnesian Wars. So it's at Athen versus Spartan. We're going to talk about, about that as well. Yeah. But, and the mechanic, that's why we, we add uh, the big battle uh, when you, the conquest battle. 
when whenever you you uh, you can fight versus uh, 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 Spartan versus uh, versus uh, Athen. Yeah, that comes because of, of the of the setting. And then the like personal conflicts between characters and telling an emotional, you know, character focused story beat is always going to be possible in any setting, yeah. and you can make it fit your setting that you're currently working yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. Right. makes sense. Uh, talking about like how you guys at Ubisoft are approaching things, um, if you can't answer these kind of things with a secret or whatever, then of course you don't have to. I just because I was talking to Jeff the other day and I was asking him. How do you even, what if I come onto the team and what do I need to learn? Is there design mythology? Are you still using rational level and game design or what's happening? Like, how are you approaching? Is there any system that someone needs to learn when they come on and want to design inside Ubisoft? Come as you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that's, a, that's a whole song. <laughs> no, but but uh, oh, oh, honestly, there are, there, are, uh, there are stuff like, uh, it's more process Uh, than um, methodology. I'm not saying that um, everyone do uh, do what what they want in the way they want. That that's, <laughs> that's not true. Yeah. We uh, there is, it's organized uh, still, uh, but nothing really. Uh, I mean, strange or or or, or, or specific. Uh, I talk with uh, people from Guerilla and CD, CDR because I, I wanted to say, say, "Hey, how you you're doing quests on 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 uh, on your side?" And the, the thing I, I I learned from that is Assassin's Creed, especially on the Ubisoft game, uh, but it's probably the same for Watchdog and and uh, uh, and Division. Mm -hmm. um, we are using set, settings that already exist. I mean, when when we we choose a location. Assassin's Creed uh, Unity. You, you, we are choosing Paris. There are places the, the um, Palais de Versailles the, yep. is is there, and is it's it's designed like that. And Notre Dame is is there, and it's designed like that. And I can assure you that people who who, who in in the past, I mean, the real people that work on uh, on uh, to build. Uh, Notre Dame didn't didn't think of hey it could be good to have a gameplay style thing in uh, in that they create because they wanted to create and on our side we have to 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 uh, to make sure that it's going to be able to to uh, give player gameplay mm -hmm. this is the thing that is might might be different in other, in other production because when you you go to uh, a, a place like um, Irul, for example, you do the fuck you want. <laughs> I want, I want the, the the mountain here. Yes, go ahead. I I want the the uh, uh, to have a, a a lake a lake here. Yep. Okay, I can do it. Th there is way much um, restriction in in uh, in Ubisoft game b because of that. So it's probably the first thing that is. The, different from from other production is mm -hmm. you have a canvas that is already there even before you choose the 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 game or the, the setup you're, you're you're going to to work on so this is prob probably the, the thing that is different from any other production uh, in terms of uh, learning uh, For Assassin's Creed, we have uh, we have our own engine, Envil. Uh, so you ca there is no way for you to learn before. Yeah, no preparation. <laughs> yes, that, that's that's the the, uh, the thing that, that you're you're going to learn. Uh, we have process uh, for for example on quest uh, on the quest uh, quest designer. Whenever they uh, change data, yeah, we asking them to uh, to uh, dev test. They are changed. I mean, they, before submitting in, in the game, there is a, a, a dev tester that is going to check if nothing is going to broke when when we are we are doing that when we're putting in the game. But it, like That's I said, it's, it, it, it's more it's more process that uh, a way to design. Uh, I'm actually we we try to change uh, how we used to do uh, some stuff in. Uh, For Assassin's Creed Odyssey and uh, for my next project, I 
do I have the, the, my, the book here? No, I don't, I don't have it, but I read a book, uh, uh, from, uh, people from Google venture. Uh, it's called the sprint book. Mm-hmm. And I start to, to, to read it and say, Hey, it might work for, for us as well. So maybe I, I don't know. Uh, and I'll check with a producer if we can try this way to, um, to make things better. That's cool. That's, I mean, in a in a very big way, uh, how you are facing the problem is the same uh, in a small way of the or a version of that in our indie studios as well, right? We yeah. have to constantly make methodologies that are established outside, or you know, meeting schedules or systemic approaches to the game design process fit for our smaller scale needs. Yeah. So. It, it's it's very inspiring to see that you are also you know looking around and getting inspired by other methodologies outside of your own uh, ecosystem. And and we are we are doing that for I mean almost every, everything um, again for uh, because when we create a Sanskrit Odyssey, we never had to work on a, a dialogue with choice. Mm-hmm. So we start to to check a bunch of game to see how they they do dialogue with choice so we 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 check uh, witcher ob- obviously we check skyrim we check uh, um walking dead from telltale and we discover there is, there is a pattern there's there are some and because we we start to to uh to go for one and check okay 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 hey but i already this see i uh, already saw this kind of pattern in another game and say okay mm-hmm. this is something different for example in in skyrim it's a waterfall Basically, when, whenever you you choose something, you're going to to go to the next step, next step, next step, next step, next step. Yep. In Witcher, it's it's uh, it's a hub, return to hub uh, uh, kind of kind of uh, not progression, but uh, methodology or uh, system. It's you have something called uh, in gold in yellow at the top, yep. and whenever it's yellow, that means you're not going to go back to to uh, to talk to uh, to people. Whenever it's yellow, you're going to to the next uh, next hub. Ah. But if if you check something that is white, you're going to come back, and they it's never explained to the player, but the player understands that it's yeah. it's really easy. Okay, the gold thing is probably really really important, and we did that for for meaningful choice. Yeah, and we we, we did that for uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The gold thing is going to bring you bring you uh, further in the story. The white is going to bring you back to to the and makes sense and it's very intuitively understood, right? The player yeah. doesn't need any tutorial to understand this. Yeah. That this dialogue option is worth worth more than the normal dialogue option. Yeah, that's very cool to see. And thinking about Witcher's branching system to be hub oriented is also a cool cool thought that you return. Maybe some variables change from your personality traits when you do certain you know choices. Yeah. But returning to the hub and then being able to branch out uh, anew from the this is very cool, very interesting. Hmm. I mean, most of the the white side quests you get at these bulletin boards in in the settlements, and all yeah. the activities are scattered around the little yeah. settlements most of the time. So it's kind of even feels like the distinction between main and side quest, not only from the color side, but only from where the bunch of activities are located in the world. Oh yes, that part. But what I was talking is really into the dialogue. You you can you can know what is the um, the next the next step just mm-hmm. by by watching the uh, the uh, the choice. But yeah, mm-hmm. you, you, when, whenever you you, you go to uh, to a quest board, for, for example, you can see uh, this kind of stuff as well. How did it? Uh, I mean, it's related to quests and maybe not related to the to the topic at hand. But I'm curious, how did you? You were product owner, right? Before for the for the for the story creator mode. Story creator mode. Yeah. How did the jump to quest design happen? Like, and in- oh, in, oh, in fact, it's the other way around. I was quest designer from the very beginning, and um, after shipping Odyssey, because we wanted to create a, a UGC, and I, I was when we start back in the day when when we started to to talk about uh, UGC, uh, user generated content. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Hey, me! I want to to be part of that. <laughs> it's it's I, I want to. It's 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 uh it's not my 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 dream, but ki- kind of um, your bleeding love for for mods and user content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's um like like I said, um I come from uh Raisin Island, which is way way uh far from from here, and me being on 
at, at in Quebec working at Ubisoft on one of the most uh, biggest franchises in the game industry. It's it's uh, it's an anomaly. I shouldn't be sh- I shouldn't be here. It's uh, no, you deserve <laughs> to be there. No, but, but I mean, yes, I deserve it. But <laughs> but I mean, it's it's not something that it's. Um, comment i mean someone yeah. from quebec being uh, working at ubisoft yes it's it's totally normal me being there it's it's um it's abnormal and it it's because i decide to 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 move and the thing i want to do and and uh, the the more uh, i i see that it's a content creator what you're doing guys it's 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 something like like that the streamer what they they are doing it's something like that. It's we, we, I, it's giving to the community to anybody who wants to create something the possibility mm-hmm. to to do it. And the story creator is you want to create something in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm giving you the, uh, we are giving you the the possibility to do it, and you can do that from Germany, Spain, Raiden Island. And this is something that I I want to, if possible, to um to give Bring back. And, to, yeah, and to, even without the knowledge of a specific engine, you yes. can mostly do it in the browser, right? Yeah, uh, you, you're you're doing uh, everything in, in the browser, and you it's something like it's like um, like a uh, PS4 game, Dreams. It's yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's something like like that. I want to be able to to give to uh, to to the player of of uh, the Ubisoft game. Uh, in fact, in every, uh, for me, every, every game sh- should have a uh, UGC, but hey, it's not my decision. <laughs> <laughs> but I sure there are people out there who got inspired by that to pursue a game dev career just by the, oh, that's so cool to create content for a yeah. game. I want to do that too. Yeah, so that's yeah exactly. I mean, when I see something like a Mario Maker, I say, yes. Yeah. This is the, the, the dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Skyrim creation <laughs> kit or Skyrim mods is the best example, right? The, the game's yep. longevity, the game's success over a decade comes almost exclusively from, of course, being a great game. But yeah. like after the first two, three years, it's all the, the mods and the user content, the thousands no. of stories that people have created from their homes. Yeah. Uh, exactly. It, it's, it's, uh, it's it giving uh, longevity to, uh, to the game and experience for, to the people that wants to become a uh, uh, game game dev mm-hmm. creators of stories yeah. so for, for me it's 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 a it's a win win and it it goes so far that even like works from, who were mods from other games become their own games like with yeah. Dota and League of Legends and these kind of games or get awards like the the forgotten forgotten, what was it called? forgotten there was a Skyrim mod that got the Writer's Guild Award of Australia and these kind of things. And these are these are mods becoming their own things. So yeah. it's awesome that you're... Exactly. I, I had a discussion with with, uh, with people uh, really recently. They say, okay, which uh, which uh, UGC uh, uh, changed the uh, the face of, of, uh, of gaming? But I mean, yes, Sky, Skyrim. But yeah. uh, uh, Counter-Strike, uh, Team Fortress... They are UGC uh, at the beginning, so and like you said, Dota tower defense, a uh, 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 genre was great yeah. by by player. I still remember the Warcraft three tower defense mods. I yeah. played them for hours on LAN parties nonstop. Oh man! I have a follow up for the for the story creator because I'm I have no idea how it looks like inside your Ubisoft pipeline, the unveiled stuff and stuff like that. So how different is that actually implementing quests or content via the browser thing, via the story creator, and actually doing it when you're not using that tool? Okay. How much more complicated does it get? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the thing that we wanted to do in um, for the story creator was accessibility and uh, and easy to easy to master. And it's not the same thing in, in the engine. You have way more option in uh, in in the engine uh, because you can create some stuff like position of uh, of npc that you can create anywhere you want in uh, in the in uh, in the engine in in envil versus where where you uh, what you you're using only the data that is already there in the story creator and it's not because we want we didn't want to it's just because how we the the Data is created for the game, mm-hmm. 
creating a, a new uh, a new location it's just too big uh, to uh, for for uh, because whenever you 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 create a quest and you're going to check quests from from other player it's probably uh, 300 kilo okay i think to 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 get to get that so it's it's nothing to to download if we, if you for example i i saw that uh, in in the forum hey I, can i record my voice and put it in in, uh, in the game even if we were okay to allow that we which we want because of uh, the um of the moderation edge, <laughs> yeah, yeah mo- mo- moder- mo- of the moderation voice uh, f- voice voice file it's going to to uh, destroy your uh, your download uh, rate i don't uh, yeah, i don't okay. know uh, mm-hmm. so your monthly download whatever is, is the name data cap basically yes yeah, exactly you're going cap, to ca- yeah. your capture your, your your data cap really really quickly with maybe two two quest which is not what we want yeah. So this is kind kind of thing, but with the story creator, you have a really good base of of how we are going to do it in in uh, in the engine. You just have, like I said, way more option in uh, in the engine. Like you can create a location, you can create patrol, you can create be- behavior. But as a quest designer, you the story creator is like forty percent of what of what we have uh, already. It's Which is like already like it's, pretty good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it can get a get a long way. Yeah. With it. And honestly, we we put way more um, uh, garde fou. I don't know what the name in uh, <laughs> detection of error. You you cannot push something that is not working in uh, in the game with the story creator, mm-hmm. except if we let the bug somewhere. But it it shouldn't. Mm-hmm. But you can you can do something like that in uh, with the is a uh, with the engine. There are always possibility because we assuming that you know what you're doing when you when you're doing uh, when you're doing it in the in the engine, and yeah. we have people that are checking if you're doing something something right or wrong as well. That's why it's there is way more option, but. Mm-hmm. If like like uh, like I said, if someone uh, the student this year in uh, in Quebec uh, had uh, three months to create a, a, a story with a story creator, and those people, if they come to uh, to work uh, with us, and uh, they still and we still have the uh, uh, quest editor and the dialogue editor as it is, and we should. It's already that. They, they they already have a step ahead of any any people that didn't learn that. Okay, maybe as a final question before we close out, uh, it's more of a personal one because I'm a narrative designer myself, right? So, uh, would you have any advice for a narrative designer such as myself who wants to change his role a little bit towards quest design? What he should be looking at or doing? Like, what's the what's the first step for a narrative designer to become like, more of a quest designer? Um, I'd say. That your focus should be on gameplay and not and not on the story. It's okay. uh, I'm not going to say a, a mistake, but uh, uh, yes, it's when people come to explain us what is going to be their quest as a quest designer, they yeah. say, and then the mother is going to say that, and then uh, she's going to cry, and and this is a part of the story, and it's fine. But what I want. Uh, to hear from you is what is going to gameplay. So once you tell the mother to that you're going to kill her husband, what is going to happen? Okay, mm-hmm. so you have to to walk ten kilometers by foot to find to find the, the husband. This is the part you you have to to say. And if you say it's going to you have you the player must to, uh, walk ten kilometers on foot. I'm going to say no. Because it's boring, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, but ah, then awesome. you say, okay, no, there is going to have the ambush here and here and here. And once he, he come to uh, to this ambush, he has a choice to do something or do some or do something else to spare. This is gameplay. Keep the player engaged and uh, like actively engaged. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Cool. So, so this is the thing. Don't talk about the story. Talk about about the gameplay. The, ge- the story is part of the quest, obviously. But as a quest designer, you are in charge of the gameplay. Oh, so awesome. Activity Thank designer you. first and story context designer second. <laughs> in a sense. At least that's how I got it. Yes. 
But no, but yeah, it, I mean, I mean, you're right because it's the writer who is, is in charge of the of the of the story. Uh, you are in charge of making the story shine in yeah. gameplay. Mm-hmm. It's it's cool. like that's a nice way to put it. But it's it's like if if you're doing a, a Mario level and you and you say, okay, what you what what you're going to say if you're explaining a Mario level? You're going to say at this point you you're going to jump etc. You're not going to say at the end. Uh, Todd is going to say, hey, Peach is in another castle. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, a good example yeah. yeah that's a great example so what you're going to say it's uh, I'm going to introduce the the jump with having a Goomba at the very beginning I'm going to put two uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, Mario 1 so I'm going to put uh, a, a brick here with the uh, with the sign uh, with a question mark sign to make sure that people are going to going to jump I'm going this this kind of stuff you're you're talking about the gameplay not about the story no, training challenges and everything yeah all right that's that's already like that's our end of the episode so um before we say all the thank yous uh, do you have this is your two minutes essentially where you can if you have something to pitch you can pitch anything you can push you can promote something you can greet your family whatever you want these are only for you and whatever you want to promote Coucou, maman. <laughs> <laughs> this and uh, no, what what I want to say, if there is uh, any student out there uh, who is going to to listen, that it's a it's a um, motto that I'm trying to to um, to encourage to uh, to student. It's uh, are you an artist or are you an entertainer? In order to become game dev, both are okay. Just mm-hmm. not every company needs both. And the difference between an an, uh, an artist and an entertainer is the artist is going to create something, and whatever he creates is going. It's Van Gogh. Van Gogh is going to create some create something, make make a, a paint, and he's going to cut his hair two days after. <laughs> and whatever uh, whatever you like the the painting or not, he doesn't care. He mm-hmm. he created something and he put what he wanted into uh, into the canvas. An entertainer, it, it, it's more like a stand-up, uh, stand-up comedian. Mm-hmm. Is going to make people laugh. He, if if he fails that, he can make the better joke of the world. If people didn't get it, or or if people didn't like it because it, I don't know, it it was out of place with with this. Uh, he didn't sense the public, for for example. It's a failure for him or for her. Mm-hmm. So, are you an entertainer or are you an artist? It's something okay, so that you, you, creator yeah. or crowd pleaser, essentially, something like that. And the one has a goal, the other doesn't really, right? I, I, I won't say I, I won't say create, creator versus, versus uh, crowd ple- pleaser because both are creators, yeah. Because both are, are, are creating. It's it's more. What do you want, in fact, to to be proud of your to be proud of of what you're you're doing? Or mm-hmm. to please the people that are going to to play it, mm-hmm. okay. because because you you must be able and it's not it's not uh, every time like that but it happens you must be able to work on a game that you don't like which which is not made for you this is really important uh, because not every time you're going to to be on on a, on on a, on a game that that is made for you it, and I mean. And it's okay. You have to find the fun, even if you are working on something that you don't like. That's why I, I, I was saying at, at the very beginning, uh, gaming is not. It shouldn't be your passion f- to become uh, to become game dev. It's creating game that should be your passion. All right, those are some awesome words to close out. Thank you very much for being here, Terry. It's much much appreciated. Thank you too. Yes, well, awesome. and for sharing your knowledge of this where can people find you if they want to stay in touch with you or follow you somewhere oh uh, i'm on twitter and uh, my uh, my handle is uh, at t uh, lore mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh, yep they can follow can follow me here yeah we're gonna put that in the 
episode description. Of yeah, course. we're going to put that in the description. And you have a hilarious uh, picture with you uh, with a mustache and mustache. you're called, <laughs> and you're called <laughs> not Thierry Loret, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> in disguise. <laughs> All right. And uh, Sven, maybe push our socials as well. Yes, indeed. If you want to follow the podcast, you can, of course, uh, keep in touch on Twitter where uh, at Idiots Industry and, of course, on Instagram at Industry Idiots. Or in the podcast player of your choice, you can open the episode description and find Thierry's link and the link to the our socials as well. So that's where you can keep in touch. Awesome. Wonderful. Ben, thank you for making us part of your weekly routine. And thank you, Thierry, for being here. And see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you too. See ya.